Good morning. This is Kasturi Day. Today I am going to discuss a chemistry chapter, elements, compounds, and mixtures on ICC syllabus class seven. So elements, compounds, mixtures—they are all substances. So these substances are divided into two parts. That is pure substances and mixtures. And pure substances are of two types. That is elements and compounds. whereas mixtures can be homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures then elements can be of uh, four types that is metals they can be non metals metalloids or noble gases whereas compounds can be inorganic compounds or organic compounds now we come to pure substances now pure substances are those substances which cannot be split into simpler substances by any physical means any physical process or physical means so, okay they cannot be split into more simpler substances like filtration uh, sublimation distillation or any other physical process cannot split them into simpler substances another important thing about pure pure substances is that they have a definite composition and a definite set of properties they have a different they have a definite composition and a definite set of properties such as their boiling point they have a particular boiling point they have a melting point they have a particular density etc and all pure substances are homogeneous okay now we come to mixtures or we can say that these are impure substances okay in this the substances these substances can be separated by two into two or more pure substances by any physical means okay by a physical means rather not by any physical but a particular process particular physical process can separate a particular type of mixture okay like filtration sublimation or distillation they do not have any different definite set of properties no they do not have any definite set of properties they, because the mixtures in the mixtures they do not combine chemically the pure substances do not combine chemically in mixtures and therefore the properties which they have the composition they have hmm, they are not definite and Uh, the composition is not definite in the mixture another thing their properties the uh, pure substances have they do not match with the mixture because mixtures do not have their definite uh, set of properties and the properties which are present in the mixtures are of the properties of the their parent uh, components the constituent components okay the they retain the properties of the constituent substances okay they may be homogeneous mixtures or they may be heterogeneous mixtures and that is they they do not the their composition is not uniform throughout the bulk okay so this is about mixtures now the first pure substance that is the element we come to that now what is an element it is a pure substance i told you that element is a pure substance that cannot be converted further into excuse me into any simpler substances by any physical or chemical process okay each element has its own unique properties okay they cannot be split into simpler substances by physical or chemical process and they have a particular unique property they have each element has it and e examples are oxygen hydrogen sulfur carbon iron gold silver etc okay now robert boyle was the first person to first scientist to use the term element then use the term element in 1661 he named the substances as element uh, for the first time okay he was the first scientist who mentioned this term element in 1661 who was that person robert boyle the antony laurent lavoisier was the first to establish experimentally 
useful definition of an element experimentally experimentally he used a definition of an element okay so the person is antony laurent lavoisier okay now we come to atoms what are atoms atoms are the smallest units of an element they may or may not exist freely so each atom combined with another atom of the same element or different element to form a molecule so atoms are the smallest unit of an element okay but one thing is that they may or may not exist freely maximum cases they cannot exist freely so in that case what happens an atom combines with an atom of the same element or of the different element to form a molecule if it combines with the same element then it forms the molecule of that same element or if it combines with an element of another uh, uh, of a uh, uh, sorry if it combines with an atom of an another element then what happens it forms a molecule it forms a compound rather okay then at present 118 elements are known out of which 92 are natural rest 26 are artificially created okay now some of these elements are solids liquids or gases some are radioactive in nature they represented all elements are represented by symbols elements are classified into i told you in my uh, flow chart that elements are classified into metals non metals metalloids and noble gases <clears throat> then we come to metals what are metals metals are elements which has a good which are good conductors of heat and electricity okay most of the elements are known as known to us as metals maximum of the elements are metals okay so they are good conductors of heat and electricity for example gold silver copper aluminium iron zinc all are metals note there's a note that chalk milk and our bones they contain calcium this is a metal okay then chlorophyll contains magnesium then rbc in mammals they contain iron then chocolate wrappers what we take uh, when we tear the uh, cover of the chocolate there are certain Uh, silver or golden colored wrappers are there so those wrappers are of aluminium now non metals these non metals these are elements which do not have the characteristics of metals that is they are bad conductors of heat and electricity they are very less in number in comparison to metals excluding inert gases only known non metals are only 11 number of non metals known to us excluding the except the noble gases only 11 number of uh, elements are non metals okay now what are those these are hydrogen oxygen nitrogen carbon chlorine sulfur phosphorus fluorine bromine iodine and astatine these are all non metals present in the earth now what are metalloids metalloids are elements whose properties are intermediate between the metals as well as the non metals that is they are neither metals nor non metals or you can say they are metals as well as non metals okay so they are uh, they have the properties of metals and non metals both so they are hard solids okay uh, for example boron silicon uh, germanium arsenic antimony tellurium uh, polonium these are all metalloids then inert or noble gases 
these are elements which do not react chemically with other elements or compound that's why they are inert okay so they are found in air in traces only six of them are known to us six in number okay so they do not react chemically with other elements that's why they are inert um, gases or noble gases uh, with other elements or compounds for example helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon these are the inert or noble gases now we come to the symbols of the elements okay now elements are denoted by a symbol i told you elements are represented by symbols usually first case the first letter of its name in english or latin always written in capital letter they are denoted as the symbol of metal for example oxygen we represent it as o hydrogen is represented by h capital h when the first letter of more than one element is same then what happens symbol is denoted by two letters first is capital and second one is small letter for example carbon and cobalt both have the first letter c so for carbon we use as capital c and for cobalt there is a capital c and a small o the first and the second letter is uh, used first one is capital c and second one is small o then again boron bromine and barium for uh, in this in these cases in the all the three cases first letter is b so for boron b is written capital b for bromine capital b a small r and for barium capitals b and small a these will be the symbols okay now the third case symbols represent an atom of that element for example h element of hydrogen and that represents one atom of hydrogen for example carbon that is represented by capital c so that represents one atom of the carbon so symbols represent one atom of that element then some symbols have uh, so some symbols taken the names of the element in latin german or greek for example symbol of iron is represented as fe capital f small e so that is taken from the latin uh, word that is ferrum iron is known as La in latin it's known as ferrum so capital f and small e for sodium it is known as natrium and that's why the symbol is capital n small a potassium so it is known as kalium in latin so it is represented by capital k copper cuprum in latin so it's represented by capital c small u nowadays iupsc international union of pure and applied chemistry uh, approves the names of the elements okay so i stop here i'll continue with the rest of the chapter in my next video please go through this if you have any doubt write in the comment box and like if you like the video press the like button and if you have not subscribed yet or if you are a new viewer to my channel please do subscribe so that you can get the notification of my next video thank you